Hi everybody, Patrick here from Engineering Shock Electronics, www.engineeringshock.com. Today we are working on Project 29 RFID for the Epic Learning Center. If you haven't already, check out the Kickstarter link below. The Kickstarter is done, but you can still check it out anyway. Uh, this is a relatively easy project to set up. Um, I've got chip A depopulated uh, for no specific reason. Um, we're using chip B specifically because the uh, MFRC 522 RFID reader uh, has a quick connect dip switch that connects to uh, GPIOs um, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13 of chip B. So just to see that, uh, you can't see that here from, from here very well, but GPIO is 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. And there's also a power, uh, a power pin. So that applies power, and this acts to quick connect the... Uh, RFI reader to chip B and chip B connect, uh, communicates with the RFI D reader uh, bi-directionally by SPI communication, SPI communication. We've done, we've uh, talked about SPI a little bit before we use it to talk to our little buddy talker um, and our uh, SD card reader but this project is a simple one. Uh, the <coughs> code itself is not as simple, it's actually quite in-depth but uh, if you have pledged towards a previous campaign of mine, the Fast RFID Reader, uh, I basically poached the code from that campaign and changed it a little bit so we're only using one chip. And uh, what happens is once they program the five cards into RFID memory, or into uh, EEPROM memory, sorry, uh, once we go back into scanning mode, it'll remember which card is which, and it will, um, it will tell us when uh, an incorrect card has been read. So I've got six cards here. Uh, Let's talk about the other uh, connections that we need to make, and then I'll do a demonstration then. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So, we've got our state dip switch, uh, channel A, connected to GPIO pin 5 on chip B. And we've got the A0 line, the analog pin 0 line, controlling our green LED, G LED, and our A1 line connecting our red LED, R LED. And, uh, and so, yeah, easy connections to make. Just turn all your dip switches to the on position here. Make sure chip B is populated. Make sure you've got these three wires connected. They're also talked about in the code. There's a co uh, connection section in the code. And then there's also what we need to do is we need, we need to make sure that we're talking to chip B. And how we do that is we set our, uh, our, our, uh, our communication pins down here to communicate with chip B rather than chip A. And I'll just give you a close-up of that right now. So as you can see, all three of these jumpers are shorting the middle pin and the right pin. Uh, RX2, TX2, and RS2 for reset. Reset2 is RS2. If we want to talk to chip A, we will, uh, or if we want to program chip A, we'll have these jumpers set to the left, talking to RX1, TX1, and RS1. Program in our cards, we want to set our state dip switch channel A to off, so down. And that will put us in programming mode. Now, as I program the cards, I want you to watch the green LED down here. Uh, I've got six cards, and I'm going to program them in order. One, two, three, four, five. And this one will be our incorrect card sample. I'll throw that off to the side. So, card one. Green LED turns on for one second, meaning it's programmed into EEPROM memory. Card two. Three. Four. And five. And once five cards have been programmed, the green LED will stay on, and it will stay on forever. It's in a software loop right now, waiting for us to reset... So what I'm going to do right now before I reset is I'm going to turn my state dip switch on. So channel A is now on. And I'm going to reset. Watch the LED on the RFI reader. And we're hunky-dory. So I've got to shift 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. If I use an incorrect card, any incorrect card that's not programmed into EEPROM memory, the red LED will blink. Now, if I place card one over top of the reader, the green LED will blink once. Card two, it'll blink twice. Card three, it'll blink three times. Card four, four times. And card five, five times. Now, here's the fun challenge. Uh, in the code, uh, in the decoding section, where it says, where it compares the new card data to the card data saved in EEPROM memory, it determines which card is being uh, talked to, or which card has been received. It was card one, uh, blink once. In those areas where it says, where, where we basically just blink an LED, uh, what you can do is you can have the Epic do whatever you want. So you can write uh, the code so that it does five completely different things, depending on what card is read. 
You can even talk to the LCD on ship one, but that'll be a bit more, that we'll do that in a different project. That's a bit more in depth. But we've got a lot going on here. We want to, uh, we'll be doing a lot more with RFID in the coming months. Uh, because obviously this is just a very simple project just getting off the bat. Now again, I'll mention that the code is not simple. It's, it's, uh, it's quite in-depth. It's easily the longest piece of code that we've done so far. Uh, I probably could have started off on the RFID reader uh, a bit more simply. Uh, if you do find that you uh, are having trouble understanding the code, even though it's fully commented, uh, just let me know. Maybe I'll, I'll come up with a, a simpler RFID project that only deals with one card. It'll cut down the code a heck of a lot. Um, but yeah, so what, what, essentially what we do is when we're in program mode, we save our card data to uh, a specific slot in uh, EEPROM memory. And each card has a different slot in our in EEPROM memory, which is recalled on power-up when we're in scanning mode to compare against. So when, we, when in scanning mode, it waits for another card. Once it's received, it saves that data and then compares it to all of the saved card data. Uh, if it matches any of them, uh, the output LED responds accordingly. Uh, if the card is not accepted, then just the red LED blinks. Now, there are two pins that are not being used in this code. I believe they're GPIO pins uh, 2 and 3. And those are communication pins to ship A, which we'll use in a later project. So you don't need to worry about those right now. But uh, again, very simple to hook up. Turn your, day, your dip switches on. And when your project's done, remember to turn them off. You don't want the uh, RFID reader consuming a bunch of power when it's not being used. Um, but yeah, when you disconnect the, when you turn all of these power, these switches off, then nothing's connected with exception to ground. Ground is always connected to the RFID reader. Uh, the RFID reader itself is actually mounted to the board via four screws and four, or eight screws and four standoffs. So that's it. Uh, it's a simple project. Uh, the sky is a limit here. The challenge to you is if you're, if you, when you've got this project up and running, change the code, make it so that card one does, uh, something specific, card two does something else. You can make it so that card three, uh, instructs the, uh, little buddy talker to say something specific. We also do have some, some sound bites in, in, uh, the little buddy talker that allows for us to say, like, card one detected, or incorrect card detected, or access granted. We could even use the uh, relay, and that's, again, it could be one of your challenges. Control the relay. Do Get the relay to turn on for five seconds, and then use the relay to uh, control something else, because the relay is essentially just a uh, an on and off switch that's isolated from the rest of the electronics, but controlled by the electronics. Kind of neat. I know we've talked about the relay in the past. Uh, if you've been following along with all the projects, you should have a good understanding of how the relay works. But that is the RFID video, Project 29. Project 30 will be the Bluetooth uh, video and it'll be a very basic Bluetooth video. I actually shouldn't say that it'll actually be a little bit in depth But uh, in order to use the Bluetooth uh, module, we'll have to eventually write uh, or create a GUI a GUI in uh, Robo Remo. There's a great app out there fantastic app called Robo Robo Remo and you can get it for free Or you can do a lot more if you pay the extra money to get all the extra features I'm using the free Robo Remo app because I uh, because I'm only using for simple applications, but it's a great app. You should check it out. Uh, I've I've stammered on for too long. Uh, I hope that you create this project. I hope you make it your own. And if you do make it your own, if you do some fun things, if you follow the challenge, I hope you'll make a YouTube video and share it with me because I really want to see people doing their own thing with this board. I'm just giving the bare basics on every single block so that so that you can learn and do your own thing. So thank you for watching. I hope you have a great day. Stand by for Project 30, which is the final block video. Uh, after I'm done that, I'll be doing a, uh, uh, a startup video, essentially a video saying, uh, showing you tips and tricks and how to get started, how to download the driver for the uh, USB to TTL bridge right here, which allows for us to program our, our using Arduino uh, via right here. And you'll notice that for this project, I'm not using the power supply. I'm just using the, R, the uh, USB to power it. We'll talk more about how to select between uh, using uh, an external power supply to power the board and uh, and the um, and the USB itself and again that'll all come in the uh, setup video so thanks for watching uh, I appreciate you uh, staying on long enough to listen to me ramble and uh, have a great day everyone